Hi, and welcome to this Dimecast about AF Networking, the most popular networking framework for iOS programming. As you can see on this site, AF Networking is used at many large and popular companies like GitHub, Pinterest, and Heroku. To get started, we're going to start with Xcode and create a new project. Because I want to focus more on AF Networking and less on setting up a UI or anything, we're just going to create a single view application just to have somewhere to work. We're going to call it Hello AF Networking. I'll make sure we're in Objective-C and click Next. I'll just save it in my Dimecast folder. Remember, because AF Networking is a CocoaPod, the first thing we're going to do is shut down Xcode. We're going to go to CocoaPods.org and I'm going to look for AF Networking. Here it is. I'll copy this to the clipboard. Okay, I'll call pod init. Then I'll open the pod file. Change the platform. Paste in AF networking. Save it. And we're out. Now I just call pod install. And it's going to install AF networking for us. Okay, there it goes. And now it tells you again. Just like in our CocoaPods tutorial, from now on we're going to use the XC workspace and not the project anymore. So we'll open another project. Hello AF Networking, and it shows we have the workspace here. Now to understand what networking data we're going to get back, there's a website called jasonplaceholder.tipicode.com. They have all sorts of APIs that you can pull from that have representative and sample data in it so that you can just practice creating some kind of networking layer or learn or it works best in for tutorials or just for practice code if you're learning some library that has a networking component. So in this case I've chosen users. So if we take a look at what the users look like we have an ID, a name, a username, an email, address is a, another complex object within there, phone, website, and company. To keep it simple, I'm only getting the simple properties and we can leave pulling a complex property for another time. It's just another layer of dictionaries. So let's take a look at what that looks like. To start with, we looked at that user and we know what kind of object it is and we saw the properties on it. So what I want to do is create an object in Objective-C that looks like that object in JSON. Create a new file. Pl call it placeholder user. Make sure it's NS object, Objective C, next. We'll save it in our folder. Okay, make sure you're in the header file, and we're gonna add some properties. I called this one user ID instead of ID, because ID is a reserved keyword in the Objective C language, and I didn't want to cause any confusion or any issues. So when that comes up, I usually add some sort of prefix or something to set it apart. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set up the rest of these properties. All right, here they are. The rest of them are named exactly the same, because there was no other collision. So for the sake of simplicity, I do like to keep them the same. Now let's go to our main view controller. I'm going to import AF networking so that we can begin to work. And let's create a method that returns void called get users. So this is the URL that we saw from the Tipicode website. Pull down the, the JSON. And now we're going to create an NSURL by using a, a helper method that is on the NSURL class called URL with string, and we'll pass it the URL string. And then we'll make an NSURL request, do request with URL, pass it that URL. So far, this is just standard iOS networking here. We haven't done anything AF networky quite yet, but that's gonna change right here. So we're gonna call and make an AF HTTP request operation. Alec, and then init with request. And then we're gonna set the serializer the AF JSON response serializer. Now for this operation, we need to define a few things. The first thing we need to do is define when you call this operation, what will happen under a success condition and what will happen under a failure condition. And to do that, we're gonna use something on iOS called blocks. You're gonna be familiar with that if you use C Sharp or JavaScript or Ruby. These would be kind of like anonymous delegates, anonymous functions, closures, something like that. So they have very, very similar features. So we're going to call it operation, so we're going to have the block with success and failure. A shortcut here is when this is highlighted, if I hit enter, it's going to declare that block for me. Just to set this up, we'll do that. So what we have here is this caret indicates that it's a block syntax, followed by the parentheses here to know that it's going to pass in the operation and the response object. And a failure, here's again the caret to indicate that this is 
a block, an anonymous function, and then a, we're just going to pass in the operation and the error. So for success, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say, we're going to declare an NS dictionary, and then we're going to cast the response object as a dictionary, because that's all JSON really is, is a series of key value pairs. So that's how Objective-C is going to handle it. And then if we have a failure, we're just going to write out to the console. So we'll log that out. So what are we going to do with this dictionary? Well, the way I usually like to handle that is we'll go back to the placeholder user. And I'm going to create a method that returns a placeholder user called init with dictionary. So instead of just calling the standard init, I'm going to init with a value. And that value is a dictionary that we'll use to populate our object. And now from here, we're just going to pull off the parameters. So we've got user ID is mapped to ID. And for rest, it's just an exact property mapping. There we go. Now we've mapped the object. And we have an init with dictionary method that when you pass the dictionary, it'll give us an Objective-C object. But first, we need to make this method available. So we're going to go up to the H file, and we're going to add it. So now we can share. Go back to our view controller. We have to import placeholder user. So first we're going to declare an array to hold all of our objects. Now I'm going to go through. So what we've done is we've gone through. So if we look at the JSON that's returned, you see, we have the entire response, which itself is considered a dictionary. And then each in inside each one, each individual object is a dictionary of key value pairs. So what we are doing is we're saying, so for this outer dictionary, inside there's an inner dictionary. That's our object. And so that's the dictionary we care about to pass to the user. And now I'm going to pass and say array, we're going to add that user. And that's all there is to it. In the view loads, we'll call get users, create a property here. And at the completion of our dictionary, we're going to set our property users And then we're going to call one less method that's going to go ahead and just write those out. So at the completion, we'll set it, and then we'll just call output users. But now that this operation is declared, I haven't actually done anything. After you declare the operation, so this was just a setup, we have to actually start the operation. So you call, you pass the start message to operation. Now we'll define output users as just saying, because our array is not typed, we have to peel the object off and then cast it. And now that it's here, we're just gonna call NS log and show each one. I've done this once already, but let me explain here too. So NS log is a method that will log basically to the console for us. And then inside here, we need to do string formatting. So I have to declare it at on the outside, which tells me that it's an NS string. And then inside here, I have the percent at, which means that I can pass it an object. That's just the string formatting code for object. And so that will print the object with the default description, unless I've overloaded it, which I haven't, which should just give us all of the properties. Okay, so when I run this, the view to load will happen. It'll call get users. Get users will, will go. We have our URL string, which becomes an NS URL which we turn into an NS URL request. We then declare an AF HTTP request operation, initialize it with the request, set it to use a JSON serializer so that the dictionary we get is, is in JSON format or is processed from the JSON format. Then we set our success block and our failure block where we take the dictionary and load up objects from the dictionary. Then when we output users, we're gonna look at each 
user in the user array. We're going to declare a new placeholder user, casting the untyped object stored in the array. And then we're going to log it out to the console using the formatting, the at sign here, creating an NS string. And then within here, we're using the string form writing command, percent at that we're passing in an NS object. Then we're just going to pass our object. But in order to output it, we need to define what will happen there. It's going to call a description on this object. So we're going to go back to placeholder user and we're going to overload the description. Okay, so we're going to format the string out and we're just going to write out all of the properties. We have six, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. I like to count, make sure I got my, my format set up right. So now that's what will get output to the user. Let's run the simulator. We're not going to see anything here, but if we come back, you'll notice that it has output all of the objects. Our username is null. I'm going to show you what I did there. If you look at placeholder user, so the object for key, I put username, which is exactly the same as the way I case username. But if you look at the object, username is all lowercase. They didn't use an underscore and they didn't use camel case. This got me every time in practice, so I knew what the error rate was right away. So we'll pull the right key this time. And now when I run it, you see our objects have usernames this time. So that's it for this Dimecast. In this episode, you learned how to get AF networking set up in your project, how to begin work, how to set up a simple AF HTTP request operation. You saw how to declare success and failure blocks for that operation. You learned a little bit about the Objective-C block syntax, and you learned how to take a dictionary and use that to populate an object. That's it for this time. See you next time.